Praise the Lord. Good night. Greetings in the mighty name of Jesus. And it is a great joy and privilege once again, beloved and friends, to be here this night, this Tuesday night, to minister the word of God. I trust the Lord everyone is in good health and happiness regardless of our situation in our world. As I always say, beloved and friends, that we are living in a very sick and sinful world. But Jesus Christ himself promised, he says, Lo, I'm with you always. I will never leave you nor forsake you even unto the end of this world. Isn't that awesome tonight? Isn't that great? Isn't that mighty? Isn't that majestic that God himself promised to be with us in every situation, in every circumstance? in every trial, in every testing, in every storm, in every decision making. He said in his words, a thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand, but no evil shall befall thee and no plague shall come not a dwelling. Welcome tonight. Let's give the Lord a big hand. Praise the Lord sincerely from my heart. I release a very special blessing upon each and every one of you. Tonight I pray in Jesus' name. And so far I forget this morning. Happy 4th of July to all Americans. God bless you richly. I trust the Lord that you enjoy this uh, very special day. Yes, Independence Day in Jesus' name. 4th of July in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Father, let me pray this morning. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray this morning you dip me in the river of liquid fire of the Holy Spirit. Anoint mortal man of clay. Anoint my lips. Anoint my tongue. Anoint my voice, my body, my soul, my spirit, my mental faculties, my thought process. Give me courage to minister and deliver these words, this words tonight. These truths tonight, oh Father, I pray as I minister your words, your words words will go forth with dunamis and power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit that many will be healed, many will be saved, many will be blessed, many will be delivered, many will be set free from all manner of sicknesses and pain and disease and infirmities and evil and every work of darkness. Let me pray a little more before I deal with this very important truth word tonight yes father god i pray our father which art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from all evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever amen now may the grace of the lord and the savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest, remains, and abide with us all, now and forevermore. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Ye though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me thy rod and thy staff they comfort me thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies thou anointest my head with oil my cup runneth over surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and i will dwell in the house of the lord forever and ever amen in jesus precious and gracious and wonderful name amen tonight beloved and friends I have a very important word to deliver unto the world today, to humanity, the 195 sovereign nations all across the world. It is not easy to be a prophet, to deliver the truths to this world, this planet or humanity of 195 sovereign nations with 8 billion souls at risk right now in the name of Jesus, 2.666 2 billion people will die will die in him not long from now. Praise God, I do not know when, but it is not easy for a prophet to say such things. My friends, it is very hard 
to minister such a word but if you have your bibles tonight uh, i must speak and tonight uh, my message on youtube is uh, 665 uh, and tonight it will be 666 666 i have to break it uh, after this in the name of jesus but i must uh, deliver this word this word has to be delivered at this date uh, it was set in the kind of way i cannot change it uh, let's turn to the book of revelation chapter 9 verse 13 to 15 praise God if you have your Bibles which you're supposed to have Revelation the last book in your Bible Revelation chapter 9 verses 13 to 15 give me strength Lord then the six angels sounded and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar which is before Almighty God saying to the six angels who are tramped Trump released the four angels who were bound at the great river Euphrates so the fourth angel who had been prepared for the four hour and day and month and year were released were released to kill a third of mankind today 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 we tonight we will focus on the second war in the book of Revelation which is the release of the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates beloved and friends the release of the four angel at the great river Euphrates mark a turning point in the book of Revelation the first four trumpets were warning were warning and a call to repentance and an invitation to turn to God but the fifth and fifth and sixth angel triumphs are more severe and their judgments are direct specifically against those who refuse to repent yes in the first row mankind is not killed yes but rather tormented by demonic Lucas and their leaders Paulian the destroyer yes beloved and friends no one dies during this time however during the second war during the second war a powerful army is unleashed to kill a third of mankind which is 2.66 billion souls according to the scripture when the six trumpets sound four angels who had been bound in the great river Euphrates are released these angels were specifically prepared for this uh, significant event. Uh, although we do not know who prepared them, they were bound for this particular hour and for a divine purpose. While it is uncertain whether these angels are considered bad, it is likely that they are evil angels. Beloved and friends, I personally believe they are evil angels because no holy angel could be bound nevertheless tonight regardless regardless of their nature they serve the divine purpose the divine purpose tonight the reason these angels were bound specifically at the river Euphrates and not any other river is not explicitly stated in the scriptures however the Euphrates rivers hold significant symbolism throughout the Bible it is associated with several significant significant events and place in Genesis chapter 2 verses 10 through 14 it is linked to this first sin and the location of the Garden of Eden beloved and friends additionally the Euphrates River holds a significance as a landmark of Babylon Babylon represents human pride, rebellion, and adultery. It, it, it was the first great empire that persecuted God's people. Beloved and friends, the river also served as a crucial military asset, providing protection of the city of Babylon from invasion. Invasion, while the exact reason for bidding the angels of the Euphrates is not is explicitly explained. Beloved and friends, these associate uh, highlights the historical and symbolic, uh, symbolic importance of the river. Yes, in, re in relation to the rebellion, sin, and the opposition faced by God people throughout biblical history. Beloved and friends, uh, Revelation chapter 9, yes, verse 16 to 19 clearly tells us uh, now the number of the army of the horse.
horsemen was two hundred million. I heard the number of them, and thus I saw the horses in the vision. Those who sat on them had breastplate of fiery red. Yes, beloved and friends, his thin, his thin blue and sulfur yellow. Yes, and the heads of the horses were like the heads of lions, and out of their mouths came fire fire smoke and brimstone yes by these three plagues a third part of mankind was killed by the fire and the smoke and the brimstone which came out of their mouths yes beloved and friends for their power is in their mouths and in their tails yes for their tails are like serpents having heads and with them they do harm harm the dis description of the horsemen in Revelation chapter 9 verse 16 to 19 beloved friends family relatives loved ones is indeed strange and Rosegate presenting the vivid image of horror destruction and connection to the demonic demonic realm some have suggested that these horsemen represent a natural army of men the particular description be symbolic symbolic of modern warfare with this me mechanism, equipment, uh, and advanced weaponry, it is possible that the, that in the joint that is limited understanding use these vivid terms. John used the vivid terms, the the, the the technology of his time. However, upon careful examination, it becomes clear that the description does not uh, align with the conventional war horses or modern military equipment like fighter jets or tanks the imagery goes beyond that can be attributed to human technology therefore a safer interpretation tonight may be to understand this as a literal army of 200 million but not composed of human beings some say it could be china but a specific national interest is assigned a demonic army in the earth held in bondage by the Lord until the appointed time beloved and friends when God grants them permission to unleash their destructive power yes beloved and friends this interpretation aligns with the early description of the demonic locus in the same chapter yes the idea of a demonic army fits within the overall context of revelation and the spiritual warfare despite throughout the book it emphasizes beloved and friends the forces of evil being unleashed upon the world during the end time working working in accordance with God's divine plan hallelujah praise God thank you Jesus Revelation chapter 9 verse 20 to 21 clearly tells us and the rest of mankind who were not killed by these plagues did not repent of the works of their hands that they will not worship demons and idols of gold, silver, brass, brass stone. Yes, my friends, and Buddha, which can neither see nor hear that idol people are worshipping nor walk. They did not repent of their murders or their sorceries or their sexual immorality or their thefts. It is indeed surprising that despite witnessing the remarkable events described in the book of Revelation, including the sounding of the seven trumpets yes catastrophic yes nature disaster yes my friends the torment of demonic lucas and the rise of apollyon the destroyer the destroyer the people of earth remains unrepentant one will expect that such extraordinary occurrences will lead them to recognize the gravity of their actions and turn to God. Beloved and friends, consider tonight the summary of seven trumpets. Seven trumpets and eight trumpets brought forth a different judgment or a catastrophic upon the earth, serving as a clear sign of divine intervention. Beloved and friends, these calamities such as hail, mixed with blood the blood a burning mountain cast into the sea yes and darken darken skies will have prompted a deep reflection on their sinful ways beloved 
and friends that but men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil and they refuse they refuse to repent they refuse to repent they refuse to repent for the more the torment caused by the demonic locus with the polyam leading the destructive charge should have shaken their hearts and caused them to seek mercy and forgiveness beloved and friends the very presence of such demonic forces will have served as we walk wake up call exposing wake up call exposing the darkness of their deeds in the need of repentance but men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil and they refuse they refuse to repent they refuse to repent yet despise all these astonishing events and divine judgments the people stubbornly persist in their sinful ways it reveals my friends the depth of their spiritual condition and the hardness of their hearts even when faced with God's righteousness judgment they remain on un healing clinging clinging to their sinful lifestyles yes in the book of revelation there is a striking deception description of people that will rather seek death than repent in revelation chapter 6 verse 16 it it is written that they recognize the judgment of god unfolding before their very eyes yes they were aware of the magnitude of his power and authority of the point that they longed they longed for mountains to fall on them seeking escape from the impending judgments this portrayal reveals the depth of the hardness of hearts heart and stubborn rebellion despite witnessing the honor undeniable truth of god's existence and this righteousness judgment they choose to resist resist repentance and highlights the tragic reality of individual who is the face of God's mercy and call for transformation, obstinately cling to their sinful ways, unwilling to turn from the wickedness. Beloved and friends, it serves as a reminder of the importance of a softened heart and a willingness, willingness to humbly submit to God acknowledging acknowledging and need for his forgiveness and salvation tonight beloved and friends the stubbornness demonstrate the fallen state of humanity all across the world it shows how deeply ingrained sin can be binding individuals of the reality of their need for salvation and preventing them from embracing God's mercy it it is a tragic reflection of the human tendency tendency to resist divine grace even in the face of overwhelming evidence tonight praise God however however it is crucial to remember that God's ultimate desire tonight is for all people to come to repentance repentance and experiences redeeming love the events unfolding in revelation serve as a warning tonight and opportunities for individuals to turn away from their sin and embrace God's forgiveness through the, the people <coughs> response may be disheartened is underscore the importance of persistently sharing the message of salvation and interceding for those who are still lost in their in the unrepentant ways in the book of revelation chapter 9 verse 20 to 21 tonight we witness a sobering truth people will be worshiping demons demons and it is short they may seem difficult to grasp to grasp but if we honestly reflect on this state of our world today we can see the glimpse of the reality already unfolding in our present society it is becoming increasingly common for satan and his influences to be celebrated and embrace the description tonight and lies spread by the enemy are subtly creeping into the various 
aspects of our lives often mark as a normal or even progressive ideologies tonight the values and principles beloved and friends rooted in God's truth are being challenged and replaced with a distorted moral compass beloved and friends the media entertainment industry and popular culture often glorify behaviors and beliefs that directly contradicts God's teaching tonight that was once considered immoral or sinful it is now celebrated and applaud applaud Satan is parallel around around sometimes under the guise of freedom or personal expression encouraging people to indulge in activities that are contrary to God's design for our lives beloved and friends the worship of demons mentioned in Revelation reminds us of the spiritual battle at hand Satan seeks to deceive deceive and draw people away from God's truth enticing them to worship anything other than one one true God hallelujah this can manifest itself in various ways such as idolizing material possessions fame power or even engaging in occult occult practices are invented invited demon demonic influence as uh, as followers of Christ it is crucial very crucial to be vigilant and discerning we must be aware of the substance lies and influences of the enemy in our surroundings yes our world may be a walking walking in a direction that embraces and normalizes the worship of demons but as believers tonight we are called to stand firm stand firm in our faith and to be light in the midst of darkness let's give our big hand our task is to live according to God's word sharing the truth and love of Jesus Christ with those around us we must not come Form to the patterns of this world but be transformed be transformed by the renewing of our minds Romans chapter uh, chapter 12 verses 2 clearly tells us tonight that uh, true prayer true prayer study of scriptures and reliance uh, on the Holy Spirit uh, we can navigate these challenging challenging times and be a beacon of hope uh, in a world that is desperately needs uh, the redeeming grace of Jesus Christ uh, let us remember that God's power is greater than any forces of darkness uh, yes and we stand firmly in him Yes, we can resist the temptations and deception of Satan in doing so tonight. We can be a testament of his love and truth, shining, shining, shining as a light that exposes the emptiness of worshipping anything other than the one true living God. That's Jesus Christ, one true God, one true God, Jesus Christ. Worship him tonight, beloved and friends. I know that this morning. I promise to pray for you tonight and I know many are sick in the hospitals many are sick unto death many are on in their dying beds yes with all manner of sicknesses and pain and disease and infirmities but beloved and friends the man of God is back here tonight to tell you and give you an assurance that says that you will not die but you will live you will live to fulfill purpose and calling and destiny because God has not finished with you as yet uh, there is yet the work to be done in your life uh, yes my friends and wherever you are tonight uh, if you are in the USA the UK Canada the Caribbean or any part of this world uh, tonight is your night uh, for a miracle tonight is your night for healing tonight is your night for deliverance uh, tonight is your night for salvation wherever you are tonight uh, whatever sickness you have if you're suffering with cancer with AIDS with COVID with diabetes uh, heart problem liver problem lungs problem blood issue a blood dialysis problem prostate cancer what the case may be if you're blind you're deaf you're dumb you're lame tonight i want to introduce you to the healer if you're suffering with depression oppression frustration 
anxiety tonight uh, the healing god can touch you and set you free if you're suffering with a migraine headache diabetes uh, if you have a mental sickness tonight is your night uh, if you're demon possessed tonight god gonna touch you and heal you and set you free tonight uh, yes because he took 39 stripes upon his back uh, he was wounded with a cat and nine tail upon his back uh, his flesh was ripped and marred from his back uh, mingled with his blood on the floor he took 39 stripes uh, according to medical doctors there are 39 major sicknesses and pain and disease and infirmities and evil and work of darkness uh, that is plaguing mankind all across uh, the world today but beloved and friends tonight can be your night uh, for healing and a miracle for god took the sicknesses let me go big for the god who created man out of dust uh, and breathed into his nostrils and man became a living soul beloved and friends there is no big deal there is no big thing for god to give you a brand new lungs a brand new liver a brand new heart a brand new kidney and heal you from all manner of sicknesses and pain and disease and infirmities and evil and every work of darkness tonight beloved and friends are you ready for those miracles i feel a tremendous anointing of god the holy spirit in this place and tonight i'm going to send for the anointing wherever you are in your living room in your dining room in your kitchen in your car in the office on the street with your phone wherever you are tonight are you ready i'm going to send for the anointing right now in the name of jesus right now in the name of jesus be healed in the name of jesus be set free by the power of the holy spirit i see many are healed many are saved many are delivered for all manner of sicknesses and pain and disease and infirmities i see that man with the growth in his stomach is gone that person with the migraine headache is disappeared that person is suffering with cancer stage four cancer stage stage four cancer you're feeling the cancer is destroying your inside right now you're feeling a burning that's the work of the holy spirit the holy spirit is burning on that cancer the man with a shut down kidney god is replacing that kidney you're too old to take a transplant and god is working a miracle you will not die but you will live the person with a strange liver you have drank too much alcohol god is replacing that liver the person with the damaged lungs yes my friends god is healing people from migraine headache those persons with depression oppression frustration anxiety it is gone that person with a mental sickness and nervous breakdown god is touching your brains right now yes you'll be healed god is restoring sanity some mind and a strong healthy body demon possession people i command those demons yes those demons are running left right and center helter skelter yes beloved and friends those harassing demons those tormenting demons are leaving your body i urge you tonight to repent accept jesus christ as your lord and savior repent and be saved tonight so those demons cannot come back and possess your body in jesus name let's give the lord a big hand go back and check with the doctors you are here tonight you're here you're here you deliver you're saved you're set free by the power and the anointing of god and the work of the holy spirit and by the blood of jesus write me text me call me let me know what god has done for you this tuesday night in jesus precious name i love you very much and dearly in the love of god do have a sweet night Teresa. i'll see you in the next session by the grace of god in jesus precious and gracious and wonderful name amen and amen thank you jesus praise god hallelujah amen